Hey team, how are we going? It is Kaz from In The Trenches with Kaz and I guess I'm back. I guess I'm back. Let me know. Thumbs up. Can you hear me? Is anybody out there? Am I back team? Hopefully you are still here and haven't come home to a vacated village. Let us know. Give us a thumbs up. You can hear? Sounds good. Looks good. Here we are, team. We've got a bunch of call outs to do. We've got a bunch of thank yous. Let's start with the thank yous. Thank you to everyone that has been reaching out, endeavoring to try and get hold of me, especially our Patreon members, Mr. Buckaroonies, Matty Morris from Zero Limits, Sean Lanigan, the Master Sniper of Six Battalion, the Battle of Dara Pet, and so many more, including family as well. It's been 18 days or well, five days leading up to a catastrophic hospital stay, all because the centre of the archery target has got something wrong with it, despite the fact that I've never had a corn cob in it. Out of it, yes, not in it. <clears throat> but tonight's about not me. Part of the focus for me today, a very somber moment, is one year ago today. And this is a lesson to all of you that are listening right now. My mother-in-law, Mary Barton. Damn, that's a lovely lady. Greek matriarch of the family. Watched TV with her son. Had a beautiful dinner. Went to bed. Woke up in the middle of the night feeling really, really bad. She died an hour later. Went to bed healthy, went to bed happy, woke up, took a breath and died a year ago today. So to Mary Barton, my mother-in-law, you don't realise how much you love someone until they're gone. So guys and girls, remember this might be your last night ever and it might be due to nothing that can be avoided. So appreciate this life you have once. Don't get caught up in the small politics of life. Otherwise, your last moments might be remembered as always being negative. No. So to Mary Barton, rest in peace, my dear. Much love, and you'll always be in my heart. Thank you. A really, really great lady. If we can get uh, some thumbs up there, nothing really needs to be said other than much I respect our two elders, respect them, listen to them, and learn from them. Okay. With that out of the way, Without the way, have I come back to a vacated village? It doesn't appear to be so. We're seeing 48 people there. We're seeing 12 likes. Hey, Yeet, there you go, mate. Glad you're feeling somewhat better, mate. Looks like we've both done our hospital time there, Yeeti. Mate, I uh, hope you're doing well. I look forward to talking to you this Sunday if you can. This is the week of Patreon. I'll put out a video tomorrow or the next day to let you know it's time to join. It's time to talk. I've got a week that I can give dedicated to you. And that's going to move into some of the other thumbs up uh, from me to you that are about to happen now. But, yeah, Notsu Kao, the white warrior, is big with a New Zealand accent. Okay, the first of our call-outs, team. Call-out to the God Squad, MC. Okay, Mick Magoo, Spiral, Lou, Club President, Dave Fuller. To all those guys, the MC has been in, in the background making sure that I'm well as well. So there we go. Thanks, team. It's uh, great to have you there. The next one, Jackie Chan, if you're sitting in your car at the moment, don't eat the spring rolls. He does Uber Eats. The guy's a legend. I rang him. He's an, an anomaly. He's a different kind of character. You know, Not sure if he wants to join the army. Not sure if he doesn't. He's 31 years old, about to be 32. Good looking dude. You know, lived life on the hard end. I think he's suited for commandos. That's what I reckon. Hey, Dave, how you going? Dwayne. Jackson, there he is there. Uh, Marky, Ozop, Gold Logie, never had one. <clears throat> Brycey, Stevie Bryce. It's all about Steve. Okay, he is doing it really, really hard in Perth at the moment. Let's just say hello on the live stream uh, while I'm still alive. Uh, yeah, he's doing it really hard over in Western Australia. Mate, I need to talk to you, you know. All the best to Liam, the biggest call out to his son 
who's got the mantle of his father's problems on his shoulders and he's doing a bloody great job. Mucho respecto. We've got Toxic T-Bone. I love that. Kapuka is just one big sleep, is one big sleep over. Okay. Um, guys, we've got people right now that the next call that goes to, these guys are in a hotel in Sydney right now. Right now. Did the oath of affirmation today, which means you're on the king's coin, staying at a hotel, paid by the tax dollar. This is their names. Uh, Foggy, Jacob, Howie, Hori. Hori. Getting ready to catch the bus tomorrow to protect uh, to protect you in the future, team. They're getting ready to go to Kapuka tomorrow. They're going to be meeting up with those that are also going from the Sydney region. You know, Melbourne are getting ready for their guys to then move up north uh, to Kapuka by bus as well. The Queenslanders, the uh, Northern Territory, the Western Australians, they're all now situated, good to go. Uh, literally Uber right now, says Jacko. What a legend. You know, if I could, I'd buy him a car, a Tesla, as I spoke to him today, and I'd get him into Uber instead. So it's all about conversations, micro-relationships. Chris McDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Welcome to the Great Unwashed, man. Chris, thank you very much. You know, he just joined the army today, the tribe, our tribe. Great to have you here, mate. Supporting the channel. Yee-hoo! Good night for Boogie Borders all around the world. What else we got? So to all those that join the army tomorrow, there's three of them right there. Let's get a thumbs up for them. They've got 100 points at the moment. They'll fuck something up tonight or tomorrow. Yeah. But their life is about to change. We're going to be speaking about that tonight. Because some of you are following their footsteps very, very soon. So what I'm saying here is, as we speak, Australia's newest soldiers are in Sydney on the King's Coin waiting for the long bus to uh, Kapuka Wagga Wagga, not a racial slur anymore, to the home of the Australian soldier. Yep. Yep, their life changes tomorrow. We're going to be speaking about that. What can you expect on day one? I can tell you what you can expect. But is day one, is day one the day you, you do your oath of affirmation? And then you wait in transit, getting ready to get on a bus, say goodbye to the family, take your mouth off your mother's tits, stop sucking the milk, and then start sucking the milk of the government instead. Is day one when you actually hit the ground at Kapuka, get in there at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, or is day one the first morning you wake up with mum and dad's spaghetti on your shirt already? You know, think of what the hell have I done? How do I back out of this and still keep a reputation? When is day one? That's a hard one. Oscar, leaving tomorrow. Mum's been crying all day. That's because she's got to get back in the kitchen and do the dishes herself. She's lost a servant. But all the best to your mum, Oscar. All the best to her in the month of Anzac. Walk with purpose, says Dave D, and he knows what he's talking about. Luke, he's got the force, but Luke, I'm your father. I had to be negative when I look at, at OR and officer ratio what is going on? Yeah, we've got the most amount of officers without leadership in the world. That's true. Don't worry about the politics. The amount of ORs discharged and scares me. It scares me too. On a positive note, all the best to the new recruits. Make it better. If it makes you feel better, a lot of the soldiers are putting their discharge in. You're going to regret it within a year. Yeah, the sweet spot is between six and 86 years service. Somewhere between that. SUS32, anyone going to compete tomorrow? Best of luck. It isn't hard at all. It's just a mental game. Absolutely. It is a mind fuck, if you don't mind me speaking, frankly. So it's time for a, a metaphor. To Hori, Howie, okay, to, um, to Foggy, right on, to Jacob, to all those guys. Anyone that's never served in the Australian Army and finished their term of service and done their training, you know, done the hard yards, come back, et cetera, but anyone that hasn't done that really can't give you any advice because what's going to happen tomorrow when you get on that bus, you're already getting the king's coin, is bam, passport, the metaphor, the passport. You cannot go overseas without a passport. Okay, in the army, the passport is your enlistment certificate. When you go to get on that bus tomorrow, the only way to go to Kapuka without getting someone guide you in other than the canteen lady, coffee, person, photographer, et cetera, is to actually sign the dotted line. 
okay, to put your oath of affirmation up there and say, I'm willing to serve the nation. Now, when you actually get that passport, the enlistment certificate, you step through a portal that will change your life forever. You'll either come out a quitter or you'll come out a doer you know, or something in between. Now, when you go there, every single thing in your life is going to change. Your personal relationships are left behind. Your dedication to the job, you have to love it more than a wife, okay, especially at the start. All right. You might have been lonely in civilian street. You're not going to be lonely now. You're going to have more people, friends, comrades around you than you can possibly imagine. And then you've got to do the shaker shifter to see which ones are legit, which ones are not. And that's going to lead into the advice column in a minute. The food is going to be prepared. You're not going to cook it. You're not going to sauce it. You're not going to clean the dishes. Your job between 6 a.m. in the morning and 10 o'clock at night is don't sit on your bed. Have your mobile phone like a doggy treat based on rewards. And from there, just do what you're told, even when it doesn't make sense. Everything you're doing is about opposite to civilian life is for someone else before it is about yourself. Everything about the military is about dark humor, attitude, and staying in the saddle and not being offended by a goddamn fucking thing. If you're offended by words, if you're offended by whatever, then what's going to happen when the bullets start flying? Or are you going to a job where you think there's no chance of the bullets flying? And I'll tell you, that's a myth as well. It doesn't matter who you are, go to the war memorial, and you'll see people from almost every single branch, every single unit that has people that have died on the battlefield from every corps. As a matter of fact, as infantry, I couldn't think of anything better. Mm -hmm. Licking my lips to come across a non-arms corps unit that I could cut through like butter through a knife. Or a knife through butter. That makes more sense. But the metaphor is that your enlistment certificate is BAM, is a passport into a different world where you train in work hours, where you train in Olympic facilities, where what you do, it works towards training towards war that may never happen, hopefully, because the alternative is misery. Hello? So be ready that every single thing in your life is going to change, every single thing. Let's keep going, but let's uh, see if there's any questions yet. Next question I'll put up there early. Right. Look, Kapuka uh, mess has is shit, but it's free. Enjoy. I don't have a problem with it. I like the food. I just don't like the fact that you've got to ram it in your, in your mouth like it's a cannonball in a cannon. Uh, get, it, get in first. Get to the front of the line. That's good advice. Scozzi, from the night, uh, from the right number, yep. Uh, first drill for all the new recruits we used to do. How would have thought that was so hard? It's true. Kapuka mesh isn't that bad. I didn't have a problem with it. Um, we even teach you how to walk. So don't go in there and try to beat the game. You know, go in there, just listen, and get into it. Uh, we'll talk to Judah for uh, because Easter's just gone and he let Jesus down. Uh, do you only get one shot at the support courses after become proficient? No. It depends on what it is, mate. What he's about is talking about the battalion. All right, once you get there, to get support courses. No, you can uh, you can cross change, but normally you don't. Normally you stay within that um, and evolve within that scheme. If you're going to have more than one support company course, then make sure that you do it at the digger level. Once you're actually officer and CEO in it, you're not changing. Okay, first bit of advice. Guys, do not hang on to the other people like at the moment in Sydney before you get on the bus, like a piece of fucking driftwood, like Kate Winslet letting uh, Leonardo DiCaprio die in that fridge of water despite the fact there was room for two on that goddamn piano lid. You know, don't hang on to someone and make them your uh, white whale. Don't rely on them like a crutch because they're probably not going to be in your section and you only should be hanging out with people in your section. Get in there. You don't know who is going to be good, bad, or ugly. You know, give everyone 100 points, but take your time, keep your mouth shut for a while, keep your ears open, and just observe people. Because your opinion of a person on day one may be completely different to week nine, which is, the, I think, the the um, shortest course I've ever been at Kapuka, I think. Uh, not a fan of that either. As soon as you shorten something, that means that either everyone else, you wasted their time, or... Uh, what you're doing is cutting corners, and I believe they're cutting corners. G'day, Wingnut. 
Don't tell me anything's wrong. We need uh, more SIGs. Yeah, SIGs is a great core. Hey, man, uh, awesome to see you vertical again. Yeah, my cornhole feels like someone's been hiding shit in there for a year, but 18 days, mate. It's uh, five days leading up to 13 days. It's been a rough trot, mate. But again, like the video I put out yesterday, I was in a low place, not a dark place. PK. Penny Wong and Albo should go to Kapuka. Jeez, I'd love that. I'd love that. How long is Kapuka? It's nine weeks now, mate. D. D. Prescott, looking to join the reserves infantry at the ripe age of 46. D, are you a guy or a girl? Okay, if you're a girl, change your core. Don't go to infantry. Okay. Um, and if you need more for that, join Patreon. There's never been a better time. So you and I can have one-on-one -on -one conversations. I'll give you the best chance. Remember, just because reserves will take you to a certain age doesn't mean it's because they want you. It's also because 46 is uh, in line with civilian employment standards, and I'm allowed to tell you no. Um, but you need to have common sense. If you're 46, make sure you go in there and you're bringing something to the table, okay? And there's no reason why 46 is too old to join the military, okay? Mm. But you've got, to, you've got to be smart with what you choose. Uh, bring through your balls, one of the best names on YouTube. G'day, mate. Dave D. There's actually a fair few guys in infantry at that age in reserves. Yep, it doesn't mean they're necessarily capable, but Dave, um, it also doesn't mean they'd cut it um, at eight months overseas. All right. You, it's a young man's game. Yeah, it is a young man's, man's game, but the rewards you get from Army Reserve, you know, as an older individual, mate, the list is longer than the Great Wall of China, and I do recommend it. Absolutely, I do. Makes you a better person, okay? And I've met people that are 50 that are highly capable people. But there's also an emotional game that you need to make sure that you're in line with uh, the people you're going to be working with. Again, what do you bring to the table? Sergeant Music, Duntrin Ops course has just been shortened for a, uh, for a 12 month trial. You know what happens to trials? They almost never work, do they? Okay, so what I'm saying is keep your distance. Advice number one from those that are near you, okay? Watch, learn, work with them, but just listen a bit. Uh, let's have a bit of an admission. We're going to watch this. What I think is, uh, pardon language, fucking propaganda. This is not what Kapuka should look like. Kapuka should be sense of urgency training. It should be blue flame, move fast, capability building, moving you a little bit faster than what you can cope at. Forcing you to drink from the fire hose. This, this looks like a goddamn Brady Bunch slumber party. And this is not the way Kapuka would run if you let real soldiers run a place to make real soldiers. A typical day, Kapuka, is waking up around six o'clock. From there, you get into your dress of the day. Around six o'clock? No, goddamn six o'clock on the second. Hallway 11, hallway 11! Get into it. Get your undies on. They'd better be on. Get in the hallway with your sheets, ruin your bed, can of paint over, and I want to hear your call off from the right number. That's what it should sound like. Go to breakfast, and then from there, depending on what stage you are. Red tabs on their chest means they've been there for somewhere between a couple of days and three weeks now. Uh, at your training, you'll conduct your daily activities. They can do weapons lessons, drill lessons, navigation, sometimes out in the open or in a classroom. So I do think there's a lot of... There's not many fit-looking people there, is there? Almost everyone looks like a little bit of a fatty boomstick. Looks like they haven't had much vitamin D either. Guys and gals. The army is supposed to take people that look like normal society and turn them into another version. And these guys will look like a different version after nine weeks, maybe, but they definitely will look like a different person after four years. Trust the system. Misconceptions within who joins the army. Coming to Kampuka, I've seen a ton of different people of different colours, shapes, sizes. All cultures, all genders, uh, it's very diverse. Doesn't need to be said. All this culture bullshit, gender bullshit, you know, leave it the fuck behind. You turn up there, you wear the same goddamn uniform. Only your surname is on your chest. If you make something an issue, it becomes an issue. Everyone is welcome, but it's based on capability, not because we need a certain amount of people, a certain amount of pigment, or a certain amount of people with a certain amount of chromosomes. 
What we need is the right people on the right day will train their goddamn hardest so they can save your life while you're training hard as hell so one day you can save theirs. You don't train to save your own. You train to save theirs, the village. Yes. Kapuka is definitely an inclusive environment. Shut up. Everyone's welcome here. There's lots of non-physical aspects. Her uniform looks like absolute shit. There's no way she had an infantry section command that would have told her how to wear a bush out properly instead of what looks like a nail. <laughs> Next to Kapuka as well, we do a lot of lessons, things that get your skills up, like working with radios and learning weapon systems. None of that's physical, but it's also really challenging and fun. In terms of time to relax or wind down, a good opportunity to do that would be at church on Sundays. You don't have to... That's a great tip, team. Listen to that one. They're religious. They have multi-faith as well. It's a good opportunity to wind down. My common misconception about Kapuka is that the corporals and sergeants can say, basically, drop and give me 20 push-ups, but they can't do that. I'll tell you what, you little fucking homo. If I was there, I'd make you get down and give me 50. And if you can't do it, I'm not allowed to make you do it. I'll get down and do 100 instead to show you what real men do. Stop trying to avoid being a real individual. What guy's hat badge was that? Let's go back. Infantry, where are you right now, son? This is an older video. If I was you, mate, I'd be giving you push-ups every day for breakfast. They don't give you or used to give us a punishment as a punishment. They used to give it because it was a passive way of making you stronger, forging the knife, folding the steel and making you a better version of yourself. You've got it wrapped. You've got it wrong. Now, free training during free time on the king's coin. It's a present, not a bloody punishment. Improves your sex life too. Now, this guy needs to eat some meat and testosterone. Hopefully he's got his skip his badge now and he's learnt from his ways. Can say basically drop and give me 20 push-ups, but they can't do that. Your staff will help you get through it and the physical training instructors, they're really there to push you through. They're definitely very supportive of you. They'll help you out with anything you need. They're very approachable and they're there to if I see you laugh like that, I'll find a way to punish you and make you wet and cold. I want you to hate Kapuka. I want you to hate the staff. I want you to hate the, the place so bad that it makes you run to the tit in the bosom of your friends and see them as the team, which makes you an ultimate team member and realise that you do care what people think. You need them on that wall. They need you on that wall. And warm weather, cold weather, means you just got to hug your buddy a little bit tighter and say, hey, mate, there's no love in this. This is all about survival get you through. The most challenging thing at Kapuka for me was dealing with a whole range of different personalities and types of people. Do I need to say more? In the end, it turned out to be one of the best things I learned. Getting out of bed in the morning, working out that morning routine. I want to get that out of the way. Everything else seems. Sense of urgency training. That's what it's all about. The thing is, ain't one gender has to shave, even if you've got a woman there that's from Bulgaria and has a lip that looks like she should have been Zig Halen in World War II. If you need to shave, it's because your face has got hair on it. Don't make someone shave with no hair, but if you've got someone that's just because they're a chick, but they've got more hair <laughs> than a Bulgarian calf muscle, they should have to shave too. What is a woman? Hashtag. A lot easier. The best part of Kapuka so far is I got to know myself to the extreme levels. I've been doing things I never thought I'll do. It's a great opportunity to improve yourself. I have noticed a lot of differences in myself. I think I've built a lot more confidence and a lot more self-discipline. Guys, I can't support that ad. <laughs> that is a that is a designed to make people you know, come and join that otherwise are too scared to come and join. And then they'll offer them a way to go and do a watered down training rather than go there and get the shock of capture, the sense of urgency training that actually changes you from the passport, being with the enlistment certificate into an actual different version of yourself, which is better in every single way. That can get the hell off here. You know, I'm going to sum this up. This is what I want from my soldiers. I want this sort of philosophy. And what is it you want? I'll tell you what I want. Soldiers should not be allowed to wear shirts during daylight hours when women are around. 
what better incentive does a man need to drop down and give you 200 than to know that there's a female about to walk down the path in 10 minutes? There should be tattoos. There should be symbology. There should be mottos and ulceristic stoicism quotes from a Marcus Aurelius on your back. That's how you know you've got the right team. I want what they want. Tell me, John. Tell me. What do you want? You want a haircut? You can go have hair like that with a headband like that, rocking around no shirt and look like you're choking on something made of leather. I'd be happy to have you serve me and without the haircut. Come on, Spartan. And every other guy who came over here has built his guts and gave everything he had once for our country to love us. Tell me. As much as we love it. That's what I want. I'm a man, but I'm wet. And that is the worst bash beret I have ever seen. No one says it better than John Rambo. You want to watch a biography on a successful individual, have a look at a guy with a hair lip that's achieved more than bloody Sylvester Stallone, you won't find it. Freddie, stop. Uh, stop it, casual. End up back in the REP. <laughs> I'm having a good time. I feel like I'm back. Dave Penson in Vietnam. Dave, I was in hospital every time you tried to call me, man. There's no way I could have answered the phone. I'm sorry, sir. Bit of nutsu cow. Brighty, Dad said that if those recruits went through in 1987, and they wouldn't know what hit him. Absolutely. And you know what? It's like your father smacking you when you're younger. You don't hate him when you're old. You realise there was a purpose. Oz Annan, Kaz, I've been in reserves for almost seven years. I've put in my transfer to full-time three times now. I'm hoping I'll go through this time. Though I've been told I'd likely have to go back and repeat the puka. What the hell for? Jaddock, Arnold Schwarzenegger is my hero. Do I need to play it again? Arnold Schwarzenegger, drop it. Okay, Sylvester Stallone is your hero. Now, one aria is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Second battalion, second to none. Amphibious ops, that's Sylvester Stallone right there. Simon Powell, god damn, we've got a rapper here. Ishan, Verma, if I got my medical tomorrow, how can, I, how can I prepare by not being sick? I can't prepare for a medical, mate. You're going to piss in a jar. You're going to get a finger up your coit. You know, you're going to get told to squat. I don't, depending on your looks, of course. And then from there, they'll work out whether there's anything wrong with you. And I hope everything's okay and I can't wait to hear from you. Ishan, if you need to talk, guys, get on the bat phone. Support the channel. For the price of a coffee a month, support me so I can support others, including the homeless. Carbine, got my enlistment date on the 21st of next month. I love your name, by the way. Army Reserve Regional Force Soldier. You're going to make some good friends there and you're going to open some doors. And that's what it's all about, networking with other like-minded people. I wish you well, mate. Dirty Carbine. Very good name. Right, what else we got? Um, okay. We've got three brigade there. Right, you're going to go to the pool. Uh, okay, here's another one. Advice number two. Expect to fuck up on day one. Don't take it personally. Instru inst instructors expect you to do it. It's like a hospital. They want you to get better, but at the same time, they also want sick people to fill the beds to pay the bills for the doctors. You know, you're going to make a stuff up. If you get yelled at or the whole platoon has to do something because you were the crash test dummy that got them all in trouble, it ain't personal. Don't worry about it. It's going to be someone else's turn next. You know what? The instructors aren't even, won't even remember your name unless you do it again and again and again. What's that shirt I'm wearing? That's Matty Morris Zero Limits T-shirt. It's fantastic. It actually feels a lot better than in the trenches with cash shirts, to tell you the truth. Um, but I, so if you make a stuff up, don't worry about it. Let it go off the, do the, the dog's back, duck's back. Get on with your job. Next one. Heck, my man got 39 likes, team. Come on. Putting some fucking theatre into this one tonight. This is one you probably don't expect for the ladies out there. I wonder if um, Elise King is out there. She's getting ready. I had one of the best phone calls I've ever had on Patreon with Elise King the other day, confused because she's a queen. Great person, got everything sorted out. So this is dedicated to Elise King. The toilet is your contemplation chamber. Try and shit every night after 10 p.m. because you won't get time before that, so you can take your time. What do I mean by that? You don't want to get caught up during the day. 
with some uh, sloppy scogging off mess food that's trying to get out of the village before it collapses. You know, you wait till after 10 o'clock, you go into the contemplation chamber in the toilet where there's no people around, and you just sit there with your head in your hands and you just relax, empty the pipes. Think, Marcus Aurelius, what would he do here? Ah, no drama, just a warm seat. That's the buddy system. So you're probably never going to hear someone say that, but I recommend that, and I used to do it too. Let's go to advice number four. Uh, what else? Chris McDonald, can't wait for your, for your next Zero Limits episode. I should be up there at the moment, but again, Mary Barton passed away exactly a year ago, and my family is gathered around the ducklings to make sure that my daughter and my ex-partner are in a good place, okay? Um, but the second I get the um, the green light, I'm heading up to Newcastle to go and get some salt water on my legs, okay, uh, some sun on my back, some vitamin D, some short soup in my guts, uh, and take those Alaskan king crabs to my father. Okay, we'll play this one in a moment, but first of all, I'm going to play you a little bit of something in the background with no noise which is the Battle of Cannae, for those who don't know, where nearly 80,000 Romans died at the hands of Hannibal Barker. One of the worst military defeats in one day in the history of the world, all without gunpowder. Samson, Newcastle is a great place. I'm around one hour from Newcastle. Samo, tell me whereabouts, mate. Whereabouts? Uh, Jeddak, but we'll have to wait. My dad passed, on, passed away last week. Oh, my God. Shadow. I'm so sorry, buddy. Can we please get some thumbs up for, for Jado's father? Can you put his name in there, please, Jado, so we can see that, mate? God bless you, mate. I'll say some prayers for him tonight. All I need is his name, and I'll do that for you. Sloppy knob. Felt like I've been there before. Now, I understand that armor isn't a, uh, a stepping stone. No, it's not. Uh, to two hour, I mean it as I'm not sure if I could go to armor or go to infantry towards two hour. You can't go wrong in armored corps, mate. It shares the battlefield with the infantry. You know, it shares the uh, forward edge of the battle area. You know, the fever, mate. Much I respect that to you. Uh, I'm in a town called Musselbrook. I know Musselbrook, mate. It's like 40 minutes from School of Infantry. Yep. So you know, I've done eight years posting there. Uh, Dwayne Duffy, thumbs up. Chato, Danny. Danny tastes great. Danny is your father's name. Mate, all the best to Danny, man. I'm really, I don't even know how to say something. Your father, mate, you know, your father should be the best man you ever know in your life. And if you're a father, you should be the best man your kids ever know in your life. That's a great bit of advice right there. You know, the man that will go to the grave to protect you, you know, even if he's not actually proud of you. That's what a father should do. I was off Jaddock. I've been there, mate. I send love and prayers to you and your family. It's no small loss, and I don't uh, and don't be afraid to seek help or talk to someone if you're struggling. When a man's father dies, a lot of weight now comes on his shoulders. All right, we're here to support you, mate. If you need it, call for it, ask it, reach out. Exactly right. That's why I always wear these blue braces for Beyond Blue. Every man gets cracks. You know, when I say men, I mean women too, team. I hope you realise. Oh, I'm really sorry, mate. Good night, everyone, says Brycey. Mr. Caswell, uh, Dad said he will call you tomorrow if you have time. I've always got time for your dad, mate. And Liam, what you do, mate, absolutely respectful of you, mate. You're a champion. Uh, Tiggy, what base, uh, base have you been posted to? All of my time was either in the 3rd Brigade, Townsville, or the School of Infantry, mate. Uh, wingnut. Uh, I don't know, you feel my dad passed away four weeks ago too. Wingnut. What's going on here, team? Mate, lest we forget to your fathers, the bastion of your family. Sorry, dudes. Raymond. Everyone loves Raymond. Which base do you suggest going to, right from Kapuka every single time, unless you've got someone with special needs, is Townsville. Townsville is always the best place to start. For every reason. All right, what else we got? Okay, let's just say um, 
advice number four, win the attitude test to start your roommate's bed first. So when you get to Kapuka, you know, you don't get to choose your bed, mate. When you get to Kapuka, you get told what platoon you're in, okay? We'll say it's 34, 34 platoon. Right, then from there, within that 34 platoon, which is part of a company, might be Alpha Bravo, Charlie or Delta, you know, then what happens is you'll be allocated a section, one section, two section, three section, four section, et cetera. It, they are your buddies. Then you'll be allocated a room number and you'll have a room buddy sleeping straight across from you. Looks like a school shooter maybe, uh, breathes through his mouth, stares at you with one eye open while you sleep. Um, this is pretty brutal in the background, eh? Um, from there, okay, what happens is as of the very first morning that you get up, you could literally say this is day one. You'll have to do sense of urgency training, which means put two beds together at least if there's not a bunk in there as well. But you just have to shave, you know, be the dress of the day, standing out there with your teeth brushed, ready to go for that day's work. Okay, that's what you have to do. Imagine the attitude test that you win from day one if the very first thing you do is go, um, a weirdo will do your bed first. You're telling him that you're a proper teammate. And then from there, he knows that you're legitimately there for the right reason. You're a teammate. Yep. So we'll always start with your mate's bed first. Uh, not Harry on Milo. Hey, Kaz, I have my rap OSB in a few weeks. Any tips? Okay, everything to do OSB team, get on the uh, get on the bat phone and I will give you a comprehensive preparation for your OSB that you will never regret. Jessica Morris, that's a lovely name. Hey, Kaz, message on behalf of my partner. He has uh, no socials, okay? What's the best membership option for him to get to the bat phone? Just go into the Black Legion, mate. Just go straight to where the Black Legion is, okay, and join that. It's the same as all the others. Okay, and from there, we'll have a communication, and I can't wait to talk to him, the way people talk when no one's watching, you know, with no politics, answering the questions, having a laugh, you know, and if you want, I've got no problem being around loudspeaker and answering your questions as well, my friend. You're all welcome. That's what we do. Johnny, Johnny. One of my roommates got back squirted into our platoon uh, at like week eight. Uh, couldn't make a, a bed to save his life. Threw a spanner in the works uh, right at the end of the course. Yeah. yeah. You can always go backwards and get your ass kicked again because someone just can't win, can't they? True thing. Thank you, Simon Powell. There is the link right there, team. Uh, jump on Patreon. I don't know anyone that regrets doing it. And um, reach out. I will give you a message within uh, eight hours normally, and then from there you just text the, the phone and then we set up a phone call and we go. We do it while you're drinking coffee at the time of your choosing. In a car park at Bunnings like a weirdo that looks like you're another cup of cop. Uh, Kaz, if I had to repeat Kapuka, would you suggest uh, it best to lay low? No, be yourself. Uh, I've already done it and been in reserve for the past seven years. No, mate, let them know and use the skills you have got to uh, help those around you, but don't try and be the instructor, okay? Team Manic YT. Hey, Kaz, Kokoda went well, but with 40 kilometres left, my foot degloved. Holy shit. Had to tap into the Anzac spirit. Honestly, uh, best experience found some unused 303 shells. Mate, It's um, I don't think I could do Kokoda anymore. My, my carcass is just not up to it. I just need to rebuild it. I'm going to start with the pool. Well done, mate. I hope you really change your life in a spiritual way. Joshy Adams. Okay, I've got my medical on Wednesday. Any advice? Again, Josh, don't pull your dick the night before a medical. Otherwise, you'll have protein in your blood and I'll think there's something going weird. That's advice. Ash, good to see you back, mate. Thank you. Chronic disease sucks. I'm off to the battlefields of France, Belgium, and Germany in three weeks. But at least before MS gets me. Oh, I'm sorry, Ash. Holy shit. This almost feels like a negative stream tonight. Ash, do what you have to do. Next year, I told you I'm going somewhere. I'll tell you where, where I'm going in a minute, and I hope you love it. Uh, Dave D, Ozan, you should be out of your uh, mates better than pretending you, you don't know anything. Absolutely. Great advice from Dave that right there. Mechanic Life Australia, Kapuka for me in 10 days. Oh, yeah. 
mechanic life Australia. My dad was a mechanic in the Australian Army, you know. Uh, best man I've ever met, and he's still ticking. All the best for that. Ramey. Uh, Joey, missed your message. Whereabouts? Uh, just uh, click and paste to it again, mate, and I'll, and I'll answer it. Wouldn't they make you uh, the squad leader with the experience? No, no, no. G'day, team. Better late than never. Foxy, I'll see you there. There you go, mate. How's your camels? And that's not a metaphor, team. I have a police fitness test on the 10th. Yeah, I don't know what the police test looks like, but I've seen a few police lately, and that test is whether they can put their belt on. <laughs> a few people have been out in the past. You're eating a bit too much there of the cops. They couldn't catch them on power walking. Uh, as being a driver, uh, as being a driver, good career. Transport's an excellent career. My friend is currently in as a driver. Would you suggest it? Yes, I would. The tickets it gives you, the fuel um, tickets it gives you, uh, has chem, uh, petroleum operator, all of those things. Never wasted, mate. Never wasted. Uh, Jado, fair call, brother. Just thought I'd ask. Okay, Joey, currently up to my medical assessment over the phone tomorrow. How can you do a medical assessment over the phone? You can't get a medical assessment over a phone. That's all physical. That's blood, eyesight, hearing tests, urine samples, all of those things. I don't know what's going on there. Um, you're going to have to let me know what's going on, Joey. I've never heard of that in my life. Team Manic uh, YT, 7.1 on the boot test. Uh, Okay, that's low. A boot test, 20 metres, 35 kilo bag carrying, one sit-up and 10 push-ups. Okay. Right, eh? So Team Manic YT, not enough to get through a route. But they want you to be able to take down a criminal who's walking around at fight weight with a high on, on ice and can fight like 10 men. This is all because, I hate to say, because they they have to have the standard for females to be able to meet that quota they need for the police force. And unfortunately, what it's doing is also bringing back down the, the, uh, the standard of the men. Ultimately, and sadly, it ends up with dead police. Or shortened careers. I don't know why they keep lowering. I do. Because Australian society is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. Testosterone is falling more and more and more and less and less fathers are in the home. That's why. Uh, yeah, yeah, I get that, uh, Team Manic. I get it. I love cops. I love paramedics. I love firemen. I love soldiers. I hate to say it. I love sailors, and Rafis are okay. Now, having said that, we've actually got a pilot at the moment in the channel, which is, uh, and he's a fantastic dude. Let's go. What else we got? If you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, team, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Call your section in for group chat. This is a big one, team. This is a big one. When you get a chance, after about 24 hours, if you're part of this channel and the expectation is you've got an advantage over everyone else that's there, what I'd recommend you do, you know, when you get a little bit of time, you know, but not after 10 o'clock, otherwise I'm going to think it's a mutiny, is call everyone into your room. And then set up a section, set of uh, 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 rules of conduct that you'd expect everyone to be by. And that should be rotating between everyone in the section, you know, so that everyone gets a chance to be the 2IC, which is the second in charge, and the section command doesn't need to know about it. Okay, so what it should be is the first day is team manic. Okay, you're going to be the 2IC. What your job is to do is make sure everyone's rooms, lockers are locked, and you're the last one out of the building. You're the one that makes sure that everyone gets passed on information. You're the one that makes sure that everyone is A-OK. -okay. If you've got uh, uh, Oz off and he's having a hard time with something, you know, he's not picking something up, then you gather around and you help him. You support each other. So day after day after day after day, the quiet people, the loud people, and the in-between all get a chance of a bit of responsibility of being the, uh, the 2IC of that section. And then from there, you let them know, this is the deal. And you have those conversations. Let's make a pact in this section before I hate you that no one ever quits, that we all help each other, that we keep the emotion out of it. 
that the enemy is the course and we're here to defeat the enemy. And then at the end, you'll actually forge yourself in a position in a team that without even trying, you're probably going to be the best section in that platoon. So do that. Uh, squad main teamwork. Yep. Are you going police or army? What else do we have? And I think that was all. Okay. Um, one of the things that's occurring, you're going to go there. They've got rid of the swim test as a gate to get out of um, to get out of the military, to get out of Kapuka. It used to be a gate. If you couldn't swim, if you couldn't pass a fitness test, you couldn't get a Kapuka. If you couldn't do seven chin-ups, you couldn't get out of Kapuka. If you couldn't run the BFA with a five-kilometre run, you know, um, doing chin-ups, seven chin-ups, you didn't get out of Kapuka. They've got rid of every single standard that saves lives every single standard that saves lives. And when they couldn't lower it any further, they shortened the course by a quarter, okay? One of the things they don't say, they might not harp on whether you can swim or not, confident in motherfucking water, because you might be British and hate to shower, you know, but this is something you've all got to do. You're ready. Especially get a three uh, three to go. Just Just call it. Helicopter underwater escape train will save your life. If you're scared of water, imagine what you're thinking right now. You'd be in a level of fear that you could not even be able to explain or translate. But guess what happens? If one person fails in that fuselage, every single person fails. The weak link kills everyone. The weak link is a dangerous individual. That was probably about seven seconds. That would have felt like 20 minutes. That's right, and you do it at night time as well. Then you've got to add webbing. Then you've got to add rifles. Then you can add even add uh, blindfolds. All sorts of weird shit happens in advanced helicopter underwater escape training. And guess what? Australian Special Forces soldiers have died in helicopter ditchings into water. It is the real deal. Divers ready? Here we go. Ditching, ditching, ditching. Joey, this is for Army and Navy. Yeah, and I bet they say Air Force too. Anyone that is in the regular forces will have to do this before you are ticked off to be allowed to fly in fuselages over water on an operational environment or in a humanitarian effort. No, not special. Uh, okay, special forces have died. Yeah, but this is some. This is not a special forces training. This is an everyone training. I'm transgender. Don't give a fuck. You're going under. Love it. Good thing I love water. Yeah, Joey, it's a, it's a good wash. Love it. Can't wait. Wing nut. I hope you do. I hope you do. I've got a nose that looks like it comes off a extinct dinosaur. And I can tell you what, when the water flows up this nose, even though I grew up surfing twice a day, you know, this still wasn't a pleasant experience. And I'm also a diver. So don't assume it's not going to be hard. It's hard. It's hard. What else we got here? Okay. So, Kapuka. We've got our guys. 
that are waiting right now down in the school, uh, sorry, in the hotels in Sydney on the King's Coin, you know, some little things that are now going to be part of their life. Okay, what I want you to tell me uh, now is how many weeks in, in the current job that you have in Australia right now, how many weeks fully paid holidays do you get a year? Put that in comments now if you can. How many weeks a year do you get holidays? How many hours a day do you get allocated to train at the gym or go to the pool in your own time during work hours? Okay, win that four weeks. Okay, Rebecca, hello, darling. Four weeks. Okay, Dave D, eight weeks. Joey, two. That's not enough, my friend. Demon Badges, 86, four. Okay. I've almost got enough to give you a sample of what I'm talking about. Tiggy, six. Okay, Oz off, no weeks paid unless you have annual leave. Okay. Hey, Foggy, here you go. Good day to the lads. Okay, Sam, Samson gets five. Well, guess what? We've got Foggy right there who's waiting in his filthy hotel room getting ready to go to Kapuka tomorrow. And guess what? As of tomorrow, he gets 12 weeks off a year. Around 12 weeks off a year. So the Army, Air Force, Navy gives you 12 weeks. It gives you everything that a, that a school kid gets off to give you life balance. 12 weeks, fully paid for. Okay, if something goes wrong at home, the Army will have you on a plane within a couple of hours and pay for everything. If you get posted to Townsville and you live in Melbourne or you live in Sydney and then it comes to holiday period and you say, I want to drive back to my next of kin in my own car, Guess what you don't have to do? What you don't have to do is save up for your, for your holidays at the end of the year that you get 12 weeks of. Why not, Cats? Because you'll get paid incidentals in the thousands to pay for you to drive home. Free medical, free dental. You know, if you decide to live in, you can pay for your meals, subsidised meals, and never do a dish again. Never have to cook. All your gym time is during work hours. Surrounded by mates all the time. You don't know what loneliness is unless you're in a shitty house and even then you can hear someone beside you doing something they shouldn't be doing beside someone beside you. Haircuts cost stuff all because you haven't got much hair to cut. You're going to be fit as shit just by being in the job. I want you to stay in between 6 and 40 years. Okay, 20. All right. Uh, what are they asking? A psychological interview. Jaden, I'll be with you in a second. Um, guys, I can't explain to you. I can't explain to you to you, you've signed your passport and you've gone through into the crucible and understand how much your life has changed. But let me tell you, sometimes I get tears in my eyes considering what would have happened if I hadn't have actually joined the army when I did. Everything I have, everything I have is because of the service I gave this country. Your surname becomes your brand. You become someone significant because of your uniform and your service and your service number, okay, and the fact that you live in a dictatorship within the military tribe, you won't have a voice per se, but you have the ability for actions. Some of the things we need to do, there needs to be at the four-year completion, I believe every soldier should get a $50,000 or $25,000 cash payment right now that you can either spend on your discharge or that you can to, to wipe out debts or to be able to spend and invest after four years completed with honourable service. I believe at the 20-year mark, anyone that gives 20 years service of honourable service to their country, regardless of core, regardless of gender, should be allowed to retire. Okay, it should be given their pension early at 20 years. If you provide peace for others by preparing for war for 20 years, then you deserve the rest of your life to be in goddamn motherfucking peace. And that starts with a pension. And how bizarre, Kaz. But guess what? England already motherfucking does it. So that means that someone like me can be someone like Jacko in Hobart. And that means that after 20 years, I can be on a pension and go, you know what? I'm only fucking 39. Who cares? 
The rest of my life is going to be the pension taking care of the bills, taking care of the bills, and I'm going to buy myself an $85,000 Tesla, and I'm going to do Uber for the rest of my life, micro-conversations with legends like you in chat, speaking to you for an hour each time, and if I need more money, I drive more. If I need less, I don't. I go on goddamn holidays in the Tesla and then get the balloter and turn the meter on, knowing that the pension's already paying for things. No one has a right to be jealous of someone that has spent 20 years providing safety and security for those of the nation of every gender, child, or faith or denomination. You deserve it. You deserve it. And guess what? They did it in Rome. They seem to do it a little bit better then. They also gave you a couple of slaves and some land as well. The least we can do to improve our recruiting, our capability to be able to stimulate and weaponize the brain of someone when someone says, oh, but Army gives you nothing, gives you retirement of 20 years. Imagine that for a qualification, how that looks on paperwork. I've been to the hospital five times in six months and my DBA gold card, when I go into this private hospital that most people cannot even afford to go to, picks up every single bill. The army pays for people to put their fingers up my ass to tell me what's wrong with me and take their time about it. <laughs> Thanks, taxpayer. Okay. Do you, am, am I speaking a weird language? Is that fair enough that a woman can work for 20 years or a man can work for 20 years and then from there retire into a second job knowing that the bills are basically already paid? Fantastic. Imagine how many people want to join the army then. And guess what happens when it's oversubscribed to the standards go back up, the quality goes back up, the capability goes up, and we go back to the best motherfucking Australian army in the world, revered. That's my rant. Driving an EV is like sleeping in a microwave. Eventually you're going to get cooked. So be it. So be it. Rebecca, my hubby who turns 40 next week is at Kapuka right now. Surrounded by 18 and 20 year olds, and he's killing it. I love that. It just sucks that the young guys keep stuffing up. One guy was uh, Snapchatting in the mess. He shouldn't even have his phone in the mess. I don't even know. He should be charged just for having his phone in his hand. Foggy, who is here is rocking up to Kapuka as well tomorrow. Can we get a thumbs up just from people that are going to Kapuka tomorrow? Chances are, Foggy, they're with their family at the moment while you're in this hotel room. Oh, no, they're not. They're going to be in hotel rooms too. Boggy, listen to that point here. Where is it? This one, the most important one. The toilet is your contemplation chamber. Try and shit every night after 10 o'clock, between 6 o'clock, empty the pipes and get a bit of you time. Do not touch yourself in glee. You need every bit of that testosterone. Midgey's bad edits. I'm 18 years old. Uh, is 18 years old too young to join the infantry? The ADF infantry. No, we had 14-year-olds join infantry, okay, in 1915 and die in World War One. 18 is fine. Stand fast. No. <laughs> How many chocolate eclairs can you down on an obstacle course with a honey brew, uh, uh, hoy brew in the other hand? I don't hot brew. I don't know. I've never tried it. I did fail a Tim Tam challenge in front of my soldiers, but. Dad, but I've been waiting for mine for 22 weeks. I'm not sure what that's about there, Wingy. Foxy, give me a couple of years. I'll be down there again. But on the other hand, uh, the other end of the stick. That's right. Tiggy, uh, is that 12 weeks off a year after IETs as well? Yes. Uh, so what will happen is we've got one minute to go, team. IETs, um, uh, what will happen is you won't have any – uh, basically leave accrued. So what you'll get is trainee leave. So you'll get a full allocation of holidays on IET uh, course over the Christmas break but I, because you haven't got the leave to give. It's called a commander's grant. Elise King, there she is. <laughs> there you go, I love. I was just saying before what a great conversation we had on Patreon the other day. Now you've got it all sorted. She's got her date that's coming up. And I, and I don't mean a piece of Arabic fruit. So I'm proud by six, contribute to your military super from day one until you retire. That's not bad. Or get at least get financially literate. 
Uh, that's for information on when to poo. Uh, that's right, Elise. You know, even ladies, you've got to let that nugget out. Samson, my friend had two weeks off, so I finally got to see him, which was great. Can you even fathom most of you professional people understanding what it's going to be like to go from two weeks to four weeks a year to 12 weeks fully paid? That should be enough for people to say, dude, that's amazing. You get so much holidays and get bored. Kane Higgins, it's been too long. How are you going, mate? Jace, came in uh, late with work. You made it. Uh, Buck, you, ha ha uh, you had, you are going to pull through. Great news. Okay, Jace says, came in late with work. You made it. Buck had you as a goner. I thought I was too. Um, not trying to make this about me, team, but just say so you know. Uh, the stint I've just done in hospital, okay, uh, for five days that led up to it was more than 200 blood shits, which means I didn't sleep for five days. Every 30-second minute I was on the toilet leaking blood. So over 200 passings in five days, I hit a wall, I got taken to hospital, and then my vitals just plummeted. Boils on my face, arm I couldn't use, I was rat shit. Vomiting from the, just from the, the pressure of boxer shorts on my abdomen. Um, it wasn't until I'd been there for just over a week that a nurse couldn't believe that I was walking and came over and actually said that her and her friends had been speaking and they didn't think I was actually even going to make it. So here we are. <laughs> Heads up. Be happy. You can make it through the storm, team. You can make it through the storm. I'm as happy as a lesbian, okay, at a women's march. Got on medical. I hope they touched my plums. No, I'm not joining Navy. <laughs> Hope they touch your plums, all right? Gold Logie, do they keep uh, changing your enlistment coordinators? Uh, they can change all the time, team. I've had five different coordinators over the course of almost a year. I'm sorry about that, dude. Okay, guys, that's an hour and two minutes. I didn't expect to be on this long. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your questions. Thank you for responding to questions such as how many holidays you get. I hope you took something away from this. To Jacko, who's in a car park in Hobart at the moment, don't eat the spring rolls, okay? To the boys that are in the hotel at the moment, surrounded probably around a mobile phone, wondering what they're in for tomorrow. Salute. Hats off to you. Guys, it all starts tomorrow. You're on the King's Coin. The life adventure begins. To the sadness, to the people that have lost loved ones recently, I, I really am sad to hear that. I really am. To Stevie Bryce, mate, hang in there, bud. But most of all, to Mary Barton, who lost her life exactly a year ago today, my mother-in-law, love and prayers in my heart for you, and I feel like I finally knew you now that I can't actually put my arms around you. So, guys and gals, cherish those around you. It's all about the tribe. I don't give it a single shit. All I do, I give a lot of shits. <coughs> what you do for a living. What I care about is the character of your soul, not the colour of your skin. You know, take it easy, guys. I'm here for you. I'm back in the saddle, but I haven't got enough meat on my ass. You know, so at least never try to pinch me. Otherwise, you're just going to feel what bone it feels like. Take it easy, guys. I love you. So I respect you. I appreciate you. This lifetime is a great one. And I'm as happy as a dog with a chop. Go okay, check out the videos, subscribe to the channel, and let's see a bump in Patreon members because it's one thing to answer your comment here. It's a completely different thing to have a 40-minute conversation with you and answer every question. See you later. Help me to help you. Don't be a dick. And, uh, yeah, be honest. Love this life. Yeah, Have a good one. See you later. And I'll be here next week just like Bubbles will always be there in a bath after a fart. Take it easy. Love your family. Duty first. And 100 points to those that are joining tomorrow. See you guys. Love and respect.